Hello everyone! Up to now we have discussed the interaction between two local magnetic moments and derived the operator uij of the corresponding interaction energy. We now turn to the macroscopic system of magnetic moments. With consideration for an external magnetic field, the Hamiltonian has the following form, where the sum of the both i and j is from 1 to capital N. The prime implies that i is not equal to j, and we took into account that uij is equal to uji. For the sake of convenience, let us first introduce the operator sigma, and second redefine the exchange integral jij as 2jij, so that we have the following expression for uij operator. And our Hamiltonian takes the following form, where we measured the energy from this term, and used the following designation. Note that the operators sigma i z have two agent states, arrow up and arrow down, with agent values plus 1 and minus 1 respectively. The obtained Hamiltonian is referred to as the Hamiltonian of the isotropic Heisenberg model. The term isotropic points to equal strength of interaction between the components of magnetic moments along x, y and z axis. In general, however, this is not the case because of the crystal field anisotropy, and the Hamiltonian has the following form. This is the Hamiltonian of the anisotropic Heisenberg model. For the special case of the equality of all j's, it reduced to the previous form. For another limiting case, when both jijxx and jijyy are much lower than jijzz, we have the Hamiltonian of the Ising model. Usually, this model is simplified further, taking the magnetic field along the arbitrary z-axis. This is the Hamiltonian we shall study in what follows. Contrary to the case of non-interacting magnetic moments, there is now the term that accounts for interaction of moments to one another. As before, our objective is to find magnetization M as a function of T and H. For magnetization we have the following expression. Since all magnetic moments are alike, the value of average sigma i z does not depend on i, and hence magnetization takes the following form, where one can take sigma i z for any one of n moments. In general, this problem has no exact analytic solution, and one must either resort to numerical calculations or make use of one or another approximation. As mentioned above, in the general case, the exact analytic solution of Ising model with interactions cannot be found. However, if we represent Hamiltonian as the sum of terms depending only on the operators sigma i z, the problem will be solved. Further, we shall use the approach that make the term sigma i z sigma j z linear in sigma i z. Let us rewrite the product of sigma i z and sigma j z in the following way. Consequently, we have for this product the following expression, where operators sigma i z and sigma j z are the mean values of the magnetic moments. Difference of sigma i z and average sigma i z, and difference of sigma j z and average sigma j z are the operators of magnetic moments fluctuations. They define the difference between true moments and the mean value. One can see three different terms in the sum written above. Terms that do not depend on fluctuations, terms that depend linearly on fluctuations, and terms that depend quadratically on fluctuations. In other words, we can present the interaction of two magnetic moments as a sum of three types of interactions for each pair of magnetic moments. Interaction of mean magnetic moments with each other, 
interaction of mean magnetic moments with fluctuations and interaction of fluctuations with each other. Let us consider that fluctuations are small. Since we consider that fluctuations are small, we neglect the terms in Hamiltonian that depend quadratically on fluctuations, but leave terms that depend linearly on fluctuations. This approach is called the mean field approximation. Taking into account the approximation used for each pair of magnetic moments, rewrite the Hamiltonian of the Ising model in the following way. Considering that Jij depends on distance between jth and ith magnetic moments, and consequently Jij is equal to Jji, replacing i by j and vice versa, we require for the second term the following expression that is equal to the first term. The third term is a constant. Therefore, we can write down the Hamiltonian of the Ising model in the following form. Considering that our system is homogeneous, in other words, it is free from interstitial magnetic moments, the operator sigma jz does not depend on j. Therefore, we can denote sigma jz as sigma z, as the same for all j. Then the second term in our Hamiltonian takes the following form. Recall that Jij depends on Rl, where Rl is the vector drawn from jth magnetic moment to ith, and convert the sum in the interaction term, where the sum over L is the sum for all vectors Rl that drawn from arbitrary atom magnetic moment to all other atoms magnetic moments. The prime implies that Rl is not equal to zero. The sum is the same for every atom, since we consider that all atoms magnetic moments located periodically, in other words, they form the crystal. Thus, the interaction term takes a fallen form, where a sum of J of Rl is the certain characteristic energy, sum of the energies of exchange interactions of randomly selected atom with all other atoms. Taking into account that J of Rl falls off exponentially as the absolute value of Rl increases, denote the J of Rl as J for the nearest neighbors and considering that it is equal to zero for other atoms, we obtain that the sum of J of Rl is approximately equal to Zj, where Z is the number of nearest neighbors of each atom magnetic moment. Since j lying in the range from 0.001 to 0.1 electron volts, zj may take a sufficiently large values from 0.1 to 1 electron volts. Denote this energy in the following way, where theta is the sum characteristic temperature. Next we shall omit the Boltzmann constant. Thus, taking into account the notation introduced, we can write down the Hamiltonian of the Ising model in the following form. Let us denote the effective field. So, the Hamiltonian of the Ising model can be described using this effective field. The main differences between this Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian of non-interacting magnetic moments are the appearance of the constant E0 with stroke. Note that E0 with stroke does not affect on the sigma z calculation, and the field h substituted by the effective field. Finally, in the mean field approximation, the system of interacting magnetic moments can be approximately described as a system of non-interacting magnetic moments placed into the effective field h effective, that is not equal to h. Let us summarize the results obtained in this lesson. In this lesson we introduced the Heisenberg and Ising models and wrote the corresponding Hamiltonians. Some samples are described better in the frame of Heisenberg model and the others are described better by means of Ising model. Further, we shall study the Ising model in detail, by the way it is simpler. In the mean field approximation we consider that fluctuations are small, 
So we neglect the terms in Hamiltonian that depend quadratically on fluctuations, but leave terms that depend linearly on fluctuations. Such approach provides the opportunity to find the exact analytic solution of Ising model with interactions. The advantage of the mean field approximation lies in the fact that the system of interacting magnetic moments can be approximately described as the system of non-interacting magnetic moments placed into the effective field. By analogy, this is the Weiss model. This field is frequently called the mean field. However, one should understand that the physics of effective field is completely different.